<laughs> okay, yeah, um, up on the screen, I uh, hope all can see it. Uh, it. Just in light of, as you touched upon, it's uh, Halloween, so I thought I'd do um, start with a scary one. Uh, uh, this is one of my, uh, just um, a self-promotional piece for concept art. Um, and what I thought I'd do is I'd just go through some of the processes, and I'm happy to answer any questions as we go through. Um, so uh, some of the finished pieces are, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, and how I, I um, evolved, um, you know, how I got from, from A to B. And also, um, you know, self-promotional pieces, but then totally different styles for um, some of my um, uh, corporate pieces and, and uh, clients and advertising and uh, um, editorial. So very different techniques, um, different processes. Uh, this one here, um, I really, um, it was a lot of fun because it was a pretty self-indulgent piece. So a different style of working entirely. But when I'm working for clients, obviously, it's, uh, it's a little more rigid and I have to show um, uh, more of a process. So anyway, um, uh, why don't we get started? Um, I'm going to click on another one. Um, this one is first born. It's another uh, self-promotional piece. Um, I just uh, love playing um, with, uh, you know, making a twist on new new themes. So this is the finished piece, and I'm going to reduce it in size for a second. Um, this is an example of when I'm doing something um, uh, just just for myself. I have a lot of um, uh, there's, there's less discipline. So I'm going to show you what I started out with. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if you can see the parallels. I literally started out with, you know, messing about with some uh, some different textures and creating some waves, and I just I, I just suddenly saw um, um, a castle emerging from the peak, uh, and I just worked from there. And then I added on and just added to the story. And here's an in between. Uh, just I love that image that you started with and what you turned it into. That's very yeah, um, it's yeah uh, it's it's fun to actually be undisciplined like this and take it uh, and I wouldn't recommend it all the time especially when you're on um, a bit of a um, uh, you know a time constraint uh, for for clients and things I just don't have this kind of you know obviously this is just fun so very self indulgent as I said uh, but it's I love it you know I love kind of um, and it really it was quite a huge departure. There's some kind of a, an essence in the or finished for, from where I started, but it's almost rec unrecognizable. But I just wanted to show one example of like a springboard of, hang on a second. So here's a um, kind of a midpoint image of, of the same one. Uh, gives you an example of how everything has evolved. Uh, got sick of looking at it one way and finally flipped it for the final. Um, but again, uh, I'm just going to move this so I can show my controls. And, and uh, now I normally, when I'm working, uh, I generally try and minimize my layers. I know a lot of um, a lot of artists use, you know, countless layers, and this is one example where I actually have. Usually, I try and and, and keep it down to uh, three: um, mid-ground, um, uh, foreground, and then background. Uh, and you know, um, I try and collapse things as quickly as I can if I have to. For instance, here. Um, I'll click on a few here. Getting rid of, you know, I had a couple of layers to to do the um, the grass in the foreground. I wanted to create. When you see the final, I wanted to create um, an extreme perspective, so I was messing about with that. Um, but it, it was a tricky one, this, because there's two competing uh, images, you know, the background and then the, um, the the strong foreground. But I tried to, you know, I, I wanted to kind of create a bit of a of a juxtaposition and a parallel at the same time. So that's that one. Um, Tanya, I'm happy to answer any questions as we go along, if, um, if anyone has any questions. Sure. I just reminded everybody in the chat window that you can enter your questions into the questions panel. Um, I haven't, I'm assuming that everything is going OK out there. You can hear us. Um, <laughs> Simon, OK. Someone's having a problem with sound here, so let me try and troubleshoot that. But okay. yeah, it looks it looks like all is good and no questions as of yet. Okay, so. well I will continue then. Yeah. Okay. Um, here is um, I'm just going through a few of my so, uh, my um, kind of like self promotional pieces, and then here's another example of uh, where I started. 
which is absolutely nowhere where I ended, I'll show you. <laughs> I mean, it's a completely different image, but as you can see, the only thing that, the only thing that, uh, I was just messing around again with, with brushes, and um, um, I just liked kind of like um, an extreme light on the face, and it just ended up, I was working with some ghoulish ideas, and then I, I just expanded upon it. Um, and, and again, just, you know, experimentation, practice, uh, when I have my downtime, that's what I like to do. I have a question from Alexander, yes. and um, wondering when do you work best, in early morning, late evening, afternoon? <laughs> what a great question, and I have to say, um, my, my answer is whenever I get the time. Uh, I do work from home. I um, I used to, I, when I started out in illustration. Maybe I should wind back and give you a bit of my background and and how it all ties into now. Um, when I started uh, back, because I'm ancient, <laughs> back in the I was about twenty and eighty nine, um, and I got my first advertising job. So it was back then. Uh, there were no computers. Well, there were computers, but we just didn't use them. Uh, and I was doing everything by hand, and it was for. It was a big agency, and we, we had all the massive um, accounts from Ralston Purina to P&G, on and on and on. Um, but we did all our work uh, by hand, and uh, uh, a lot of night work, <laughs> you know, just because the the, uh, the pressures of the time constraints were, were massive. So we'd, we'd work literally for five hours, uh, five days. I, mean, I know that sounds crazy, but we were young, and we did it. And there was like a shower in the, we'd, we'd, um, we'd just stay and work and not go home for, for five days. And we'd run downstairs and buy clean underwear <laughs> and take showers and drink lots of coffee. Um, and then as things progressed, um, uh, this was all storyboarding. Finally, uh, computers came in. Uh, uh, my first taste, and I've always, I've, I've always loved painter because I, um, my background when I did my personal stuff was always with with watercolors or oils. I, I was always very traditional. Um, and then I, I think it was about 95 or 6, maybe a little bit later. Um, it was about that time. Uh, I think it was Painter 5. I, I could be getting my chronology wrong. But I got introduced um, um, to, to Painter at, at work by a a friend of mine who is a colleague, he's a colleague but another agency, and what, it was incredible because we went from having to, uh, we were printing out our drawings, we were, we were drawing and we were putting them um, in the photocopier and we were, I know I'm a bit off topic, I will come back to the, <laughs> the time, uh, the time thing, um, and we would print, we would print them off on marker paper and color them, but once we, you know, got onto the painter program, it was it was unbelievable because we, uh, you know, a massive massive time saver in so many ways. It took away the physical constraints, so it it improved tenfold the quality, um, and we weren't also sniffing carcinogenic markers and all that good stuff. Um, so I was always a night owl, but then I um, had a child. And uh, you know now I generally will will work a bit late. I'll get some sleep, and I, I prefer to wake up early in the morning before I have to do any kind of chores like get anyone off to school and things, um, and just have those few precious hours in the morning. Maybe because I'm a lot older now, um, but uh, I think uh, I would prefer if if I had it things ideally I would work at night. I just find it's a quiet time. You know nothing is going. You know most people aren't going to interrupt you. And I really love that part of it, but it's just not in it for me. I, I have to kind of, uh, I have had to twist my my schedule to fit, um, you know, my reality right now. Um, sorry for that long-winded answer. Oh, no, that was great. And your agency days made me think of my agency days that I forgot about. That oh yeah, was it, did night. you block them from your memory? <laughs> um, you know, there were some of my best days, but it was hard hours and staying overnight, just like you mentioned. So absolutely, yeah. I, I think um, you know there are there are advantages and um, disadvantages to getting older. I think you get you 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 learn more coping mechanisms and you you learn to budget your time more. But I definitely miss those days of youthful 
um, rejuvenation, if you like. I mean, we didn't even have to sh sleep. We could just take a you know, quick nap. With our I literally used to have a, um, um, like a, a makeshift bed between my, I had two, I had two workspaces because I would pull freelancers in when I got totally inundated. And um, I would sleep, you know, whenever I got a chance, I'd be just, I'd just crawl under my, uh, <laughs> my desk with my pillow, <laughs> catch a few, uh, you know, catch a half an hour of sleep just to, you know, because it made a big difference and then have some coffee. Um, but now I definitely have to, you know, I have to make sure. I can do it, but it, then I, you know, it takes a lot longer for me to recuperate. So I say to those of you that have youth on your side, just enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it while you have it because it's, um, it definitely gets harder to, um, to put, in, put in those all-nighters. I mean, I have to do it still. I try to avoid it if I can. And then I have all-nighters when I'm doing it just for myself, and that's just pure love, and I'm, you know, fueled by my inspiration. Yes. So I do have some questions coming in. Um, Doug asked, okay. and I was wondering the same thing, because you showed the reference of the landscape part of the painting, but do you ever use references for the... Yes. Piece? Yes, I do. And in fact, uh, if you hang on, um, I will show you, um, hang on one second, please. Sure, no problem. Um, I can answer some of the questions that are coming in. Um, Ron is just making a comment that he currently doesn't use Corel Painter, and he's been right. playing with Topaz and Nick, and he said that it looks like a more manual process with Painter, which there is some truth to that, but we also have photo painting tools that you know, can help facilitate your painting process. There's an auto painting component. You can also dip a brush into a photo. Um, so if it's the blank canvas that scares you, I would encourage you to download the 30-day trial and, you know, maybe start a test run with the photo art and the cloning tools. That might help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think well, what I generally find, um, what I use reference for is, um, uh, when I'm doing period pieces and things, and I, I definitely, as soon as I find my file, I apologize for this. It seems to have disappeared. Um, uh, but okay, I'll, I'll give you an example here. This is, um, okay, uh, when it comes to um, certain, certain subject matters, I have no choice, right? Um, Okay, so this is a piece from uh, one of my, uh, it's a bit of a departure from what I've been showing you, but um, if you see over here, I'll just click on my layer. Um, uh, when I'm working with factual things, with people, I've got to use reference for, for instance, the individuals in this. Uh, sometimes I have to make sure that they totally don't look like anyone. For example, the goalie, I would have loved to have um, put some logos, but I couldn't because we don't have licensing for, pre for other um, uh, so this is just where licensing comes in. For instance, the Maple Leafs, uh, I have to make it clear and I have to make sure that number 44 looks like 44 and so on. So I have to use reference for these guys, but also reference for things like logos. And in the midst, of, because it's a centennial, uh, the logos that were on um, the shirts and also on the puck, for instance, got changed. So what I did, oops, sorry, what I did was went in and I got the new logo. I'll blow it up here so I'll give you an, an idea. Um, and I just used a layer um, because I'm not good. I just don't, didn't have time. We were going to print. So what I did was I utilized that. And that is actually in putting, you know, uh, reference directly on, which I don't like to do, but you have to do it sometimes. And this is a perfect example. And then if you scroll up, um, so then I, I just um, used the tool for distort and um, uh, placed that logo on the right angle for the puck um, and just, you know, collapse the layer. And I did here too uh, on his crest. This was just hand-drawn, but um, the crest, just for expedience sake again, um, I actually used um, the logo that they provided with me. Uh, same up here. So you can see, you know, I, I, I try, as, but I like the painterly look, and you know, I used to, as I said, work, um, ex, you know, I used to work in oil paints, and one of the things I love about painter is it's the closest that I've had, I've, I, I do 
I've I've had to utilize Photoshop, and I know some people swear by it, but I, you know, I, when uh, when I started, uh, my friends and I, we all agreed that Painter was, you know, for for what we, it was just so much more uh, tactile. I, you know, the, just just the way uh, the brushes worked and the uh, the color wheel, I just loved that it was a very small transition, and perhaps that's because I'm a bit of a techno peasant. I I just I really love that. Um, um, you know, and and also just that variable that you can you can, it doesn't look um, you don't have to make it look uh, computer generated. It can look very very painterly. Um, I've I've got some examples that I can show you of even looser stuff. Let me uh, open this one up. Um, this was a quick one, and and it'll it just shows. Now this one I'm showing you here. Yeah. See, it's much more painterly and uh, much quicker and loosey goosey. Right. Well, even when you zoomed in on the Toronto Maple Leaf one, it kind of looks like I don't know if that was a sergeant brush in the background, but I can see. Yes, I can I, see the media. Yes, I love. Um, uh, you know, uh, I'll just click on what uh, I. I really love. Um, uh, like the coarse wet bristle and things like that, and then I also love to go in with my um, um, the the blurry you know tool just to bl you know blur things out and things if if things are looking too you know uh, crisp and things. But as you can see, I like the happy accidents that occur with some of the brushes, um, and then with other things, um, I'll use the airbrush um, the airbrush tool for more diffuse things. But yeah, I think uh, it depends. It really it depends on the project. Um, this the with the kids book. It, it was kind of like striking a balance between having to find um, uh, you know you have to have to make people look like one another, and you're talking about corporate corporate um, uh, you know logos, and they're very specific about how they look. Uh, so there's that side of it that's very kind of rigid. But then, with other stuff, you can you can have some fun with. Uh, I'll show you. This is something also that I've done. This is this um, a, a cover for um, um, the Chronicles of Spartak, <laughs> and it was a lot of fun to do. But it was a, a bit of a rush. Um, and I will show you some of my preliminaries uh, when I spoke to the. I actually worked directly with the author, which is. Uh, rare, like usually when you're working on a book, like for instance, I've done about 16 kids books, and um, I will, I don't generally, I might confer with the author, but most of the time I'm working directly with the publishing house, because they're the ones that are putting the money in, they want the creative control. And then also when I'm working on, um, you know, advertising stuff and other editorial, it's, um, you know, uh, it's a very different thing than when you're working on, uh, because you know, it's great to have the um, uh, the writer's input, but when they're this was it was a personal um, uh, he he printed it um, uh, self-publishing, so it, it was really fun to kind of um, just evolve the character. But he had very I'll show you how we started. Um, this is a couple of this was a couple of the story the the preliminaries I gave him, and then the color. And uh, we were playing around with, it, yeah, it looks extremely different, doesn't it? But um, this was where we were going, uh, the direction we were going for the longest time, um, where he was wearing some kind of a, a twist on, you know, um, an older um, Terry here. I was, you know, showing, uh, again, this is a great thing that working digitally where, you know, it takes a heck of a lot more time if I had to do all three of these. This way, I can just do my base and then uh, uh, mess around with. Um, I'll just go up on the color in um, in Painter and, and change the settings, um, just to try a few different things. I, I do that a lot when I'm working too. I do play with um, uh, with colors um, as I'm shifting. Now, a lot of uh, some some illustrators like to work with black and white. I only do it just to save time. But when I'm doing stuff for myself, I always like to start in color. I will go back and drain the color out of it just to see how my tone is going um, and to work, you know, just to concentrate on my, my composition. But I just find colors just so emotional for me. And I, um, it, it, 
I just um, I experience um, um, working with color. I, I really, really love it. Um, here's a couple of examples of when we were trying to nail down the character, um, what he was going to look like. We did a whole slew of these ones. And uh, yeah, so it's not a waste of time, but a lot of the time you, you go down a road and then you've got to reverse out. Now, I frankly, I didn't want to do this. The character has to, I mean, he's a he's a, an Olympic gymnast um, as well as, you know, a few other things. So he wanted, he, at the end, the, um, the um, writer wanted me to have him in his little, you know, with his giant built chest. I would have way preferred to have had some clothes on him. I, I'm a, I think it's, it's a bit distracting, um, it, but it's pulpy, right? It's, uh, it's got that kind of a look to it. So that is that. Does anyone have any other questions? Um, there was a question asking if you create a specific color palette before you begin painting. You know what? I don't. And I know some artists do. Um, I just color, like for instance, here's an example of, it's a pretty, I, color is extremely important to me, but I generally work, um, uh, you know, this one's very simplistic. I mean, it's very, you know, very, very simple. Uh, and, and color enhances mood so much, uh, and it's such a powerful tool that when I do work, I, I definitely create a, a color theme, but not necessarily from, um, uh, let me just uh, open this up here to show you. Um, okay, the nest. I'll open that up again, and I'll show you some of my previous ones to that. So this has a very muted tone, but it's actually quite colorful. If I was to go in and pump it up, in you know, the, if I was to, it would be very, very colorful. But I, I, I worked uh, from the muted one, and I'll show you one of my earlier ones to give you an idea. Um, here we go. How things evolved. Yeah, I, there are so many ways to. You could work from a reference image. You can build a color palette from a photo, or yeah, it, there's yeah. so many different ways to work. Absolutely. So here's here's an example of an earlier one. I'll just flip it just for uh, comparison purposes here. Now, but he, are, you, are you saying this is an earlier stage of the? Yes, it's uh, an earlier phase. So as soon as it flips around, which will be in a second, <laughs> there we go. So I'll bring this over. Let me just give you, um, so I, um, again, this is just, it, it's very similar, but um, uh, I, I, I was trying to create some, it, it's, it's, it's quite complicated in, in, in its lighting. Like, for me, they're all intertwined, you know. Uh, uh, um, color can be distracting, and that's why it's great to check, the, as, I, as I said before, sometimes I'll just um, do, you know, I'll just drain the color out of, an image and see how the tone is working on its own, so I can I can correct where I'm going wrong with my compositions, um, you know, and it, it's just it, it kind of like um, cleanses your palette essentially, um, uh, figuratively and literally, and and gives you an exact you know gives you kind of a um, and here this is a, an example of what happened. I didn't like how with my my uh, protagonist there and how she was. I wanted her to be the main, you know, I wanted her to contrast against the, the big monster in the background. Uh, in fact, the, in, the, in the foreground, that's um, the eggs of the mother monster uh, that are, I mean, it's just so gross. I, I had a lot of fun with this one, the, you know, the disgusting uh, sliminess and the, you know. But I what I it. didn't like, <laughs> thanks, what I didn't like was uh, what was going on with the main character. Um, in a, one of the earlier ones, I even had her holding a, a torch, and there was just too much. Uh, uh, it was just too much uh, competition with light source, and I wanted to simplify it. That's why I got rid of her um, bare legs and created a little bit. I changed her entirely as far as her uh, outfit because I I didn't want to distract from. I like that kind of contrast between the the white bluish fleshiness of, of the backdrop to her and the knife mm -hmm. and you know it's kind of like the subtle and um, contrasty at the same time so the 
you know, uh, that's an example of kind of uh, fading out color for me. But I do love color. Uh, I mean, I, I have to work in black and white for storyboards and things sometimes. Uh, and there are, there are people that are much more masterful. Uh, I don't, you know, we all have our fortes and we all have our um, struggles. And, and I have to say I, I, I'm constantly struggling with, um, with different things and trying to improve. Uh, but I do love color. Uh, and I generally, if I have my way, I work from start to finish in color. And I do like to, I'm pretty disciplined as far as my palettes, like I'll choose a palette um, and, and continue with it for the most part. But uh, We've yeah. got people asking, I know you've mentioned a couple of the brushes that are your go-to. Go yes. Do you have a handful that you can recommend to them? That yes. Let me just uh, open this up. Hang on one sec. Okay. Um, let me... Uh, I'll open up one in, in Painter, that way we can... And there was also another question just asking, do you ever happen to start in another program and go back and forth between Painter I really, I don't. I don't. Um, I'm, I'm a bit of a, of a <laughs> one-trick pony as far as... Um, and I don't know what that says about me, uh, but I, lo I just... I, I'm, I've been working with Painter since, you know, um, 95. And um, I have had to do certain projects. Actually, traditionally, I've had to go back and I've done a bunch of books that they wanted me to do it traditionally. You know, I did oils and things. But, um, uh, you know, I just, um, I really, um, I, I also went in-house a couple of times where people called on me to work on Painter. Uh, sorry, Photoshop. Um, but I, this is my, um, I'm just familiar with, with uh, way, the way everything works. So let me tell you a few of my, uh, right here. Um, we've got uh, the airbrush, of course. That's a standard, and it's great. And I'll, I'll just show right here in the background. This one here, I had several layers, but m predominantly it was the foreground here where the, um, um, you know, the chains the, the are in the foreground, and then this uh, creature. And then in the background, uh, what I did on a separate layer was I utilized my, for instance, the airbrush, and I put it on the um, um, straight one, uh, and then I, sorry, I can't talk and work at the same time, obviously. I'm going to just draw a line and show, show what happens. See that? There. So I, I like to utilize really kind of handmade, rough tools, like more of the... Um, um, as I said, the, the, the coarse wet bristle. Um, oops, let me get it off the, you know, this type of a thing. That is one of my favorites. Uh, and then I just changed the opacity and the size. Um, you can get all sorts of lovely, uh, you know, as I said, happy accidents and textures. And I, I like that spontaneity. Um, and then when I'm going in on the details, for instance, uh, um, I will, you know, in the background, uh, this one is a bit of an exception, but generally I try and cut less detail in the background, make it a little more diffuse. But again, back to color, I will utilize um, often, you know, the color and keep keep the contrast low and things like that. And in the foreground, I will use other detail tools, for instance, um, uh, the, I'm going to turn to black here, one second. So this is, a, someone was asking about the, the I know you, I used to do um, more color, color uh, you know, I create my own palettes and have it here, but I just find this is more spontaneous to just utilize um, this right here. And oh, and what I do do a lot of is I will click on the dropper and I will pick from my image. Um, I do a lot of that uh, to keep uh, the continuity of tone. Um, but if I zoom in on here, I just want to show you the type of detailing. You know, you can see as it gets closer, it's not, uh, you know, from far away it looks quite, sharp, but then, um, you know, gets a little more abstract. Oops. The level of detail that you paint is, it's astounding. <laughs> well, it's, 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 um, it's, you know, I, I think probably, um, it, you know, you can fight with your, um, your urges. I, I've always fascinated with other, with friends of mine that are, that are, um, you know, fellow artists that 
we all have our different uh, crosses to bear, so to speak. Mine is I'm a just a minute. I'm fascinated by the minute of things. I, I love details, and I constantly have to. And that's why it was really great in, earlier in my career where I was forced to do storyboards. And I'll show you a few of the quick and nasty things that I do also. Um, these are much more finished. And this is self-indulgent, as I said. I love detail, and probably to a fault. Uh, I, 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 some of the concept artists and some of the, the uh, illustrators I, and artists that I admire the most are the ones that have the most beautiful economy of line. And I, I really am jealous, and I admire that. And I, I, I try and emulate it. Um, but this is my nature, I think. Um, and everyone is different. I think you just have to play to your, play to your strengths and constantly fight you know, your weaknesses and improve upon them. So yeah, again, this is an image that's, um, it was um, a self-promotional piece. So I had, I spent the time because I was just enjoying it. Um, uh, doing, you know, playing with textures and uh, I just liked the sharpness of it. You know, the, the, just the subject matter. I wanted, to, I wanted to get a real taste of, I wanted people to taste the atmosphere, the dampness and, you know, mossy iron and the corrosion and all those things like that. So yeah, the detail, you you know, uh, I do get a little overboard with the detail. Not in everything I do, but this is an example of, of where I've kind of gone a bit too far, I think. <laughs> I don't um, think... Pardon me? I don't think so. It's, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's amazing. Now, with your textures, because we have paper textures built in, do you ever create any of your own paper textures, or do you just use the default? I just use brushes. I I um, I will use, for instance, um, other things that I do. I, I, I kind of uh, I I like the glow stick on occasion too. Um, mm -hmm. That's a lot of fun for you know glints and things. But you can you don't use it too much, in my opinion. As you know. Um, but I, I also like some of the, the airbrush splatter ones, which is another spontaneous thing. Um, let's see here. Yeah, you know, the fine spray, that's a lot of fun. Um, either, a black, you know, dark on light or light on dark. Uh, I, I just, um, you know, depending on how I'm feeling, you know, I love, um, I love utilizing some of the oil ones. Um, now, I I have to admit that I'm not a, a very technical. I know there are people, like for instance, I um, when it comes to um, uh, 3D, I've, I've dabbled very little in it. I know people utilize 3D to create uh, their perspectives and things. I like to just wing it and eyeball it because I guess I'm a bit old school. Uh, you know, generally I like to get my 3D from just several layers. Um, and, and get that from, you know, diffuse and things. Um, I think working uh, in advertising and doing all the storyboards, I mean, we just, we had to work so quickly. Um, it was great training as far as, uh, you know, not having time to um, work from reference a lot of the time. So I'm going to try and find that reference uh, one that I was, um, uh, speaking about because I want to show some photo reference. It's not, uh, it's not what I. Um, I don't copy the reference, but I utilize it for for certain things. Um, here's another. So, uh, type of... um, Hello. So does that mean do you ever do any painting directly on a photo, or you just purely open the photo as reference? Yeah, it's just for um, most of the time. For instance, here's an example. Uh, I'm horses, you know, I can draw a, a rudimentary horse from my head, but I just, you need to kind of look at reference and uh, just make sure that you're refreshed and things like that. So um, this is an example of um, utilizing reference for, uh, but again, if you look in here, the, um, uh, you know, different techniques, just trying to get it a little more painterly, you know, for the, um, oh, sorry. Um, what do we have here? Yeah, that's another example. This is part of the same series. Um, this one I did look at reference for the boat. 
uh, trying to see the type because it was a very specific error. Um, and again, just uh, just to make sure that uh, there's um, that I'm I'm working that it's believable. I'm just going to open up this one too. So you were just born with an innate talent. Well, <laughs> no, I, mean, I do. I like, and you probably had a lot of training, but well, like I said, the, my years in in storyboarding were really helpful um, because we just we it was we just had so um, and and I have to say I have a kind of a set too when I'm drawing from 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 just my head. Um, Obviously, uh, some, you know, you're not going to have the same level of detail. Uh, if I'm having trouble, I will definitely use myself as reference for, for instance, light sources. That's, uh, you know, that's really great to do. Um, but just like this, for instance, uh, uh, looked at some reference for the horse, but for the for the boy, you know, the kid that's being dragged, the, you know, you're not, it, you can't find reference like that, so you just have to ad lib. Um, and then obviously, I. One of my things that I really love is um, I love nature, and so that's where I I think um, that's that's my forte. Um, other people are just fantastic at technical things, and I'm not so good that way. I, I find um, if I'm you if I'm having to do uh, something technical in buildings, I will go and have to look at reference um, for for certain you know mechanical things because I'm not very well with this in that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's an example of, you know, another really cartoony layout. Again, you know, very exaggerated because we're quick and nasty, a few minutes each, right? Uh, drop some some quick tone in and um, it's more, um, it's not technically correct, it's not ana totally anatomically. So this is what I'm talking about, you're almost speaking in, um, in shorthand in visual shorthand and symbolic rather than, uh, you know, you obviously have to apply certain things, uh, but you can get away with a lot more when you're doing this type of a thing. And what um, brush do you use for, for instance, for like the sketch part of it, the black sketch? Right. Um, pencil. I'll just pull up, uh, um, hang on a sec, I'll just pull up Photoshop, uh, I mean, uh, pull up here. Um, I'll probably just use, um, you know, uh, the, the pencils, and sometimes I'll use sepias and stuff, but most of the time it's this type of a thing. Uh, just the grainy pencil, because I like the texture, and uh, uh, I, I love the fact that when, you know, when you put pressure on it, it gets darker, and so you lighter and darker, it's, it's, um, it's great. So that's, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you how, I'll, I'll just use this as an example, actually. Um, Generally, when I'm I'm working, I'll do this and I'll send this to the client. There's a quick and nasty tonal, and then um, if they want to go to color, uh, I'll just uh, create a, another layer so the canvas is blank. It'll go blank in a sec there, and then uh, go up onto layers and um, just a new layer. And I'll use gel. I, I just like that, and then I can just work right on it. And this is transparent underneath, and I can either discard it or um, or keep it depending on the um, the type of uh, project it is. If if it's going down, you know, tighter into more realistic imagery, I'll get rid of the lines almost entirely. Uh, but if it's just a storyboard type of a thing, I will keep the lines, um, and it'll just be a bit of a you know the drawing is there, and I'm going to augment it with some color. For instance, uh, um, that's how I work. I'll just uh, pick a. Oh yeah, and I also sometimes will use um, just to create. Oops, that's a bit dark, um, but I can always go in with another brush and open it up. I and I never. I mean, some images I like to work from dark to light, and and then vice versa. Um, so just for this, I'll just go with this because I already started it. Melanie, what kind of tablet are you using? Oh, I'm using a, hang on a second, I'll have to check. <laughs> it's been a while, I need a new one, I think. Um, let me just lift it up and have a look. Exactly, so it's an Intius 
a Wacom NTS. Okay, yeah, so you're from. using a Wacom. Yeah, um, but I'm looking for the size. I actually, I had an older one, um, um, and I it went on the fritz after 10 years, and I bought one of those tiny little bamboos, and I used that for years, and it was fine. I know some, some uh, people love to use a larger screen. My one is just a bit, I guess, um, it's about 10 by uh, the actual, you know, um, yeah, drawing I, surface it's area. 10 by 7 or something. Nine. Pardon me? I think it's probably the same one that I have. It fits into my computer bag perfectly. I can travel with it. Yeah. Well, I'm a lefty, so I haven't switched it over. Sometimes I inadvertently, you know, we've, I've got a side panel that I accidentally, you know, touch and things go haywire, but um, yeah. It's probably I, I'm, a medium size into host. Yes. Um, my, my philosophy is if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but I have always loved the idea of, um, um, you know, trying out a Cintiq, um, and I haven't as, as of yet done it, and I, that's going to be my next purchase very soon, I think. I might get myself a Christmas present. Um, now I've heard different things. I, I just think it sounds great, you know, that actually you don't have the separation. But the brain is an amazing thing. I mean, it just it, it doesn't take long for you to look at the screen, and, uh, you know, not look at what you're drawing at. To so uh, you know, it's it's uh, the technologies are, are phenomenal. I mean, um, the Cintiq. I'm I'm pretty excited about trying that. So I'm just going to continue here. Are there any questions about? Um, while I'm working? There, well, you're getting a lot of comments that you're wonderfully talented. They love <laughs> your work. Um, just to let you know, because I know you can't see the, the questions panel here. Alexi oh, was you. wondering, because we have noticed that you're using 2015, that just yes. if, as to why that version. You know, I, I have to be honest, I'm just just pure laziness that I have not switched over yet. Um, uh, it's it's kind of like I've been so busy, and I know this version. I I mean, I started out as I said with Painter Five, and I'm always kind of late in the game in in switching. I've got um, uh, I've got you know just because I'm kind of familiar with, and I've got my set brushes. It's just expedience, really, and laziness. I. I <laughs> No other reason. I haven't actually tried uh, um, uh, the um, uh, 2017, and I, I plan on it very soon. Um, but I haven't, um, I haven't had any glitches on this one, so I really enjoy it. I the actually one went thing straight. That, um, that I was thinking that you might be able to take advantage of, specifically with this example here, is the our new gradient fill, our interactive gradient tool, and then you can auto paint. Oh, or yeah. quickly, you know, if you wanted to quickly colorize a comp, obviously you wouldn't be able to paint the body like you just did, but like for a background wash. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's one of the new things that you might like to check out in 2017. Yeah, well, um, as I said, I, I marvel at the those individuals that really embrace the, you know, the newest part of, um, of the technology you know, uh, be it Corel or anything else, um, and I, I, you know, maybe it's just because I'm a bit old, <laughs> you know, but I really, I, I, um, I, I just love um, uh, working with this one right now, but I'm definitely going to, I think once I kind of get everything, once I get my new Cintiq, I'll probably switch everything over and uh, there'll be a bit of a learning curve, um, but yes, I'm sure there's a lot of things available that I'm going to be excited about. I haven't tried yet. Hello? Yes, yes, I'm here. Oh, sorry, someone just tried to call me, so that was that beeping. Oh. I cut, if my voice cut out. Doug is wondering, is there anywhere online, he's got an image that he would love to send to you for your opinion. Sure. Um, or maybe it's something that he could post in social media and you could... Yeah. Well, I have, um, I think my, uh, if you go on my website, there's a contact thing where you can email me. Um, I would be happy to, what, um, what, um, um, 
uh, what does, does he want me to um, comment on it or? Oh, yeah, I think so. It's something that he he started on his iPad, finished in Painter. It's Halloween yeah. theme. He thought you might enjoy it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, on my website, um, it's all one word. Um, I don't know if it's up there. I think it's connected to the link, isn't it, Tanya? My website? Yes, yes, yes. I provided just your click website. On that, go on to contacts, and my it goes straight to my, uh, to my email there. Yeah. So, guys, if you have any other questions, now is the time. And <laughs> just in case you have... You don't remember her website link? It's melanieroseart.com. Yeah, and all I lowercase can, one word. I can throw that into the chat window for you all. And I did forget <laughs> to mention that I'm recording this session, so we'll have this up on YouTube, and you can view it later. Great. Thanks. All right, let me check and see. No more questions right now. You guys are very quiet today. <laughs> I'm still looking for that uh, the process thing. I, I can't believe it's gone missing. It's very frustrating here. Hang on. Mm, Doug is, with me. While you're looking for that, Doug is wondering if you ever have to redo artwork over and over. To the oh point yes. <laughs> um, well, and it, it depends on who you know. Sometimes it's it's um, it's just that the client has changed their mind. Like for instance, um, I'll give you. Um, an example with the kids book uh, that was really quite interesting because um, for instance the Maple Leafs they didn't have a good year last year we can all admit it right <laughs> and when um, uh, they wanted some personnel changes to the book uh, I'll show you it's quite humorous this is for number four bobbleheads and I had to uh, change one of the we had Kessel and I had to change to uh, um, to this guy. So this is an in-between while I was working. So um, I had to shift everything around, um, get rid of Kessel. Um, I'll show you. There's Kessel. I had to get rid of him, add another guy. <laughs> so this is an in-between, so it's a bit rough and scribbly. I had to make some shifts. Uh, so that happens all the time, uh, you know, just before print and then people call me in a panic. and. Um, and that's just, you know, because those up high have decided that, you know, they don't want certain people in the book as, you know, um, obviously, uh, you know, and as, a, as an illustrator, I'm happy to make a certain amount of changes, but sometimes it gets a bit crazy um, because it's just, uh, it's not anything you've done wrong. You know, that's why I really like to nail things down and I will do, I will send people just, just preliminaries um, before I've invested too much time in it. But, you know, sometimes it just can't be helped. Sometimes last-minute changes occur. But that's another great thing about digital art. I remember when I was working traditionally exclusively, you know, working in oils, for example, or even watercolors, it's even more unforgiving. Uh, the changes were just, you know, just almost impossible sometimes, right, with watercolor yeah. and things. So yeah. this is a perfect example of how expedient it is when you can just drop in another layer um, and there you are. It can take a matter of seconds even uh, just because, you know, you don't have to do all the lettering by hand all the time. For instance, this one here, um, uh, the sun being and, you know, all, I actually just went into the type um, and uh, typed it out and just, you know, did what I needed to do, twist it and manipulate it. Um, so, yes, that's great. I remember spending hours and hours um, having to hand letter logos and <laughs> yeah, oh my it was gosh. lots of fun. Yeah, yeah, back in the good old days. <laughs> I, I never liked when a client would stand over my shoulder. Yeah, oh, but that's right. I mean, it used to be, you know, as I said, it was a double-edged sword. Uh, when, when you did things traditionally, there was a limit to what they could do, right? But uh, uh, when it came to the computers, definitely. Once we were doing things on uh, things digitally, there was someone over the shoulder saying, "Oh, can you just, you know?" <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I think in in some respects, some art directors did use it as um, uh, a bit of a crutch. Um, the old school art directors had to have their ducks in a row; they had to have everything sorted out before they went to print. Right? Went to 
um, either um, order the type or you know get the illustrator to do it. But once things kind of went in house on desktop, it was so much easier to kind of change on the fly. And that's good too, though. I mean, you I think you get a better product when you can actually uh, experiment and mess around with it. But you know, it can be abused and used as a, a tool of laziness. I think as well. I've got a couple more questions here, and I know we're almost to the top of the hour. Well, um, I'm happy to, to answer anything. Yeah. But they're wondering, do you have any instructional videos? Um, no. <laughs> um, just this one <laughs> so far. Okay. And I, I, do, um, I do plan on doing a few. I, 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 I'm kind of, uh, you know, as I said, I, I'm not sure. Um, uh, how much knowledge I can impart, really, because uh, I, I have a lot of um, ex personal experience, and, and my advice is, um, you know, we all learn differently, right? Um, and I think I, I really admire how some people can just go in and, and watch other people work and get so much from that. I'm a bit of a plotter. Um, I've always kind of um, had to work it out myself through through many, many, many countless mistakes and uh, trial and error. Uh, you know, I uh, I wish kind of I could snap my fingers and be 20 again, and I would do it, I would really really delve into uh, the technologies, um, and definitely I'd advise people to just get you know I, it's just so the 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 wealth of information out there online now is just phenomenal. I mean it's uh, it just blows my mind, and I'm learning all the time, and that's the wonderful thing about art, in my opinion, you're constantly learning. You never, you know, stop. You're always a student, um, and it's exciting. I'm, 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 you know, as old as I get, I'm always like a little child, you know, with with awe and glee, um, with, um, you know, kind of improving myself and and being inspired by the most incredible stuff. I, I just really, you know, it's such a joy to be able to go online and um, and see the 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 depth and wealth of, of incredible talent out there. Um, I just, uh, you know, as, as the years go by, it just gets better and better. And I think it's it's a uh, it's because of the collective knowledge that we're all um, embracing. You know, uh, I think uh, you know back in the past, people used to sit in their little turrets and toil away on their own. Uh, and nowadays, it's much more open, and uh, people feed off each other. When you hear about these little groups, like Group of Seven, and then you know the um, uh, the Impressionist painters, when they worked together, that was a real boon for them. Yeah. They they fed off each other, and I think that's just exemplified in our day and age now um, with the technology. I, I think uh, it's going to be pretty amazing. I think we're only just on the beginning. It's just going to expand and expand. Is there um, any like particular, the <laughs> um, do you have an online resource that you would recommend? There's a lot of people that are beginners on yes. this webinar, you know, beginners to painter and beginners yes. to painting well, in general. Uh, how I did it was just, you know, um, tooling around on my own. Um, and as I said, trial and error. Um, I think... Uh, experimentation, especially with programs such as Painter, I think they're just so intuitive. Um, I mean, you can go in and you know, uh, you know, read some tutorials and things too. But you know, you, I think everyone's a, as an individual, you'll like some things that some people don't, w w you know, won't like, and then vice versa. Um, I think exploring on your own has has a lot of advantages. Um, you know, I, I think there are so many different styles of working, even in one application. Um, I'm pretty bare bones. I'm very, you know, I like, as I said, limited layers, and um, uh, you know, I don't use a lot of bells and whistles that are available to people. Um, but there's so much more to take advantage of than um, I unfortunately can impart right now. Um, but does that answer the question? I'm not sure. I think so. I'm waiting to to see if a response comes through here. Um, do you? How do you decide when a painting is done? That's a good question, and uh, uh, I have great difficulty because there have been there have been paintings that I have killed. <laughs> you know, I've just 
done to death. Um, and you know, sometimes that's great because when you're doing work on your own, uh, you know, as I said before, it's 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 a it's a lot of fun and it's you learn a lot even at your failures. And and if you do something to death, well, you know, it's done to death, but you learn something from it. Um, you know, I do try and uh, limit myself, and I, the, you know, I try and do um, it, um, little warm-ups, and I limit myself to, you know, half an hour or an hour, things like that. Whether I won't, you know, don't use reference, and just um, just do it as quickly as you can, and that really helps me because that is something that I have a tendency to do, as I as I touched upon. Um, and I think there are people that have the opposite problem, that they, they are afraid of details or um, they're excellent, you know, with, um, with just kind of like the initial stage and then they have difficulty working in the details. I'm the opposite. I just don't know when to stop sometimes. Um, I mean, I'm aware, you know, uh, when I'm doing, overdoing something and I, sometimes you just have to say, okay, it's done, you know, and then you'll look at it and you'll cringe, and you'll say, oh, I should have done that, but if you continue, you'll never finish anything. And there's a certain point when you really have to kind of cut the cord. It's like a baby, right? <laughs> you just, just you know, move on to the next <laughs> the, you know, because you just, yeah. Um, but definitely, um, there are people out there that are way better at uh, knowing when to stop than I am. Uh, but you know that's just my style. Um, I know I really, really do love the details. Um, I like the intricacy. Um, I'm forced to do quick and quick and nasty things, and that's satisfying in its own way. And it's it's really excellent practice for me. It disciplines me in a different way. Uh, but yeah, uh, and often just uh, practicality. You don't have time when you're working for clients. Um, uh, you know, in advertising, there's a really quick turnover. Uh, editorial too, sometimes. When you've got a matter of, you know, minutes to do uh, storyboards, uh, you 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 know you really learn quickly how you know you don't have the luxury of overdoing something. Uh, the only time I have the luxury is when I do my self-indulgent, uh, you know, my my uh, self-promotional pieces, as I call them. But really, they're <laughs> self-indulgent, you know, pieces. But that's fun. You know, I think it's a balance. Right? You can go to two extremes and hopefully uh, you learn something from both. <laughs>